Welcome back. So I started off Monday by getting this other window uh, prepped to be bonded into its frame. So you can see just test fitting it there, making sure it's sitting in there nicely. And a little bit later after doing the final prep and uh, mixing up some high sole, here it is all bonded in. And uh, just a couple of clamps on there to hold it together while it uh, sets up. So now that that's done, be ready to um, get the uh, other door underway. And meanwhile, Zach and Jeremy are continuing on with getting uh, the last of these molds done for the ribs for the elevator and the four plane. So as you can see, they still have a handful to do, but they're working their way uh, through completing those. And before I can bond the skin onto the door, I needed to actually build up this flange here because we had, had to cut it away um, because of how the strake of the wing tank sort of... Um, sits there that little bump out there that you can see that was something that we added after the fact and uh, having to cut away the edge of the door frame to make that fit um, left not very much flange to bond against so I basically made a little fence there and put that in there and it needs to be sanded back now and I'll be able to glue the skin on um, and uh, meanwhile uh, Keith has been working on uh, trimming off the lower uh, wing skin surfaces there that are out of the molds now so that's the right hand side one uh, lower so just uh, still working on getting that one done. And on Monday afternoon I thought I'd change things up and work on the engine a little bit. So as you can see I put the whole redrive pulled out of there um, in order to change out the pulleys for those new ones that arrived the other day. And over the weekend I also got uh, one of the fuel flow sensors hooked up there and tested and working. So that's good. Uh, so there's all the bits and pieces of the drive all pulled out and uh, starting to put the new pulleys in there. That's the new pulleys you're looking at and the, on the left there are the old pulleys. And here's Keith again, he's carefully just marking out where his cut line's going to be there on the trailing edge of this other wing skin. So this is the, the other one now, the, the uh, left hand side one, uh, before he was working on the right hand side one. So just marking that, his cut lines and that, so he knows where to cut. And now Zach and Jeremy are working on um, putting down the heavyweight layers on some of those ones that they did the other day. So as you can see there, and Zach's just sort of doing some trimming to make sure it fits nicely. And the other ones have been completed, now Keith is uh, on those and um, is cleaning up those, so he's basically cleaned up all the edges and now he's just sort of, uh, you know, cut, cut the edges and now he's uh, sanding back the edges there. So this is what the, they look like after they've been all cut and trimmed, and he's just um, finishing off smoothing out the edges so nobody gets hurt on the sharp uh, fiberglass. And here Jim is working on bonding a little hard point into the bottom of the center console that's going to be a mounting um, spot for the valve that's for the gear dump, if you ever have to dump the gear. And here you can see I've got the engine uh, mostly back together, or at least the redrive mostly back together, with the new pulleys in there. You can see they're a little bit larger than the other ones. And uh, because of that I actually had to change the routing for the oil um, return for the uh, second turbo. So there you can kind of see it under there. I'll show it to you a bit better there. So there's the pulleys there, the new belts on there, a little bit longer. And there's the return there. So I had to turn it around. It used to go the other way, and I turn around facing this way. But now it's an AN10 line, and uh, I'm feeding it into the sump directly now. That's the plan. Um, but I don't have a, a reducer for that because I've got to feed it into an AN8 connection there. So I uh, have to feed it into that uh, Y fitting there. So I've ordered that, and uh, once that comes, I'll be able to run the engine again. And the other thing I did on the engine there was I got the uh, second uh, fuel flow sensor put in there, the one on the return line. Uh, so it takes a differential of those two um, to figure out how much fuel is being burnt. And I've also flattened out the prop again, because um, when I run it with this next thing, I want to get the maximum RPM out of it. And meanwhile, Jeff's in the process of prepping up to lay the first of the spars for the wings. And these are the, the rear spars, or the ones that basically right in front of the uh, ailerons. So fairly straightforward spars, so just getting those organized. And here's that hard point for the gear dump valve. So the valve actually mounts underneath the center console, but the handle goes through into the actual console itself. So if you ever need to activate it, you'll just sort of reach in there and, and turn the handle. And here Jeff's in the process of laying up that first aileron spar and this is a fairly straightforward layup. There's just a couple of plies and some core in there and then um, on Thursday I'll finish it off by just um, closing it out with another couple of plies. So just a, again a two-stage layup. And it's good to do these ones this way because it, it makes sure that the core gets bedded in properly 
and um, you don't have any bunching um, with the second layer and here it is a little bit later on it's under the bag there and all vacuum down so as I said um, this one is the aileron spar so it's the rear spar um, on one of the main wings and uh, it'll get um, the second inside layers laid up on that on Thursday and I haven't shown much of Jim but he's been working on a bunch of little different projects for me so this was getting these um, little um, pins hooked into place there on the uh, rudder control and those are going to be swaged onto the end of the cables uh, later on and here he is again uh, working on drilling these holes through for where the mounting bolts are um, for this aileron box into the keel so there's going to be eight bolts that hold that in place and with um, sort of nut plates at the back of them that will get um, sort of bonded in to the actual keel itself but you'll see more of that uh, next time and finally back on the engine I actually got the wiring done as well for that um, uh, that second uh, fuel flow sensor and looking in the in the uh, ECU here you can actually see some of the different values and stuff that you have to set for when you're configuring one of these different uh, setups there so there's a, a feed and a return and all the different uh, settings and that that you dial in in order to, so it can read uh, the values coming off of that and I also got um, the sensor hooked up for the low uh, oil level and also the one for the low coolant level so a bunch of different things are sorted out uh, on the engine now and as I said once that um, that uh, reducer comes for the oil return line for the turbo I'll be able to run the engine so the goal is to uh, run it up to 3800 rpm now which should be able to get there with this new pulley ratio and uh, having the accurate fuel flow with the um, with the flow and the return um, I should know exactly uh, how much horsepower we're putting out at that um, setting which will be really nice and we'll be able to extrapolate a lot, lot of information from that but you'll see more of that hopefully uh, on the weekends one and uh, you know we've got 4th of July here so no one's working uh, tomorrow and Wednesday but anyway that's our update for the first half of this week so thanks again for watching